Hi, I'm Dr. Tony Mork, board certified orthopedic surgeon, endoscopic spine specialist. Today, I would like to talk about the greatest contributing factor to successful surgery, whether endoscopic or uh, open or really any type of surgery in general. And that is having the correct diagnosis. If there's anything that's going to predict a positive outcome for a surgical procedure, it's the correct diagnosis to start with. Practically everybody I see in my office has one thing in common, pain, whether it's back pain or neck pain, and regardless of how long that pain has been going on, usually people who come here do not have a good diagnosis of the pain that they have. They are happy with the term back pain or neck pain, and yet this is totally unsatisfactory. The word diagnosis comes through the Latin from the Greek to distinguish or discern. There are a lot of muscles, ligaments, tendons, all holding the vertebral segments together. And the fact is that many of these cannot be seen. So when people come here, they don't usually have an accurate diagnosis. They come in and they say, I've got neck pain or back pain, but that hardly does anybody any good. You need to identify what the pain generator is. And believe me, after spending many years uh, in sports medicine treating shoulder and knee problems, I can tell you that small problems like a torn meniscus in a knee or a little bursitis in a shoulder can cause a lot of pain and disability. So small things can cause big pain and big disability. The main problem is that CAT scans, MRI scans, and x-rays often cannot see these small areas that are problematic and causing pain. A tear in some of these tissues from some type of an injury, either just overuse or actually traumatic, will go unnoticed no matter how hard you look at these MRIs or CAT scans and no matter how long you look at them. You just can't see the problem which leads us with a big problem. How are we gonna know what really hurts? People talk about sprain and strain, but the problem is they don't really talk about what is sprained or strained. And of course, uh, these refer to the tendons and the ligaments and a sprain and a strain are different. But really, even if they're different, the problem is we most of the time don't know what the pain generator actually is. Not knowing where the pain is coming from causes a huge problem. It's just not enough in many cases to look at the MRI or the CAT scan or the x-ray up on the board. Putting your fingers on someone's back or pushing on someone's neck is not enough to identify the pain generator. So the most important thing to actually consider surgery is a diagnosis. Let's take another example. Someone has stomach or belly pain. If you operate on someone's gallbladder and they have appendicitis, the problem is not going to be cured. It'll be the wrong operation. Same is true in the neck and the back. The problem is the diagnosis. And I recommend a, a technique I developed over the years called spinal pain mapping. Spinal pain mapping is the most important adjunct I use before recommending surgery in a large number of cases. So what is spinal pain mapping, the technique that I've spent years developing? It's actually a very interactive technique and differs from pain management in, in this. The people I'm injecting are very lightly sedated for placement of the needles and then I go through a systematic algorithm to inject what I consider to be the most likely candidates to be pain generators for people. In this particular model, let's just say that someone had some back pain, perhaps in this area, over to the left hand side. My first suspicion might be that they had facet pain. So these are the facet joints. I can sequentially inject the facet nerves, the nerves that go to the facet joints and then allow the person to get up and move around. I'm not gonna flood the area with anesthetic. I use very small amounts. So I'm gonna be very specific and use small amounts, just not flood the area. Then allow the person to get up and move around, get into whatever position would normally cause pain. 
if that is, uh, if the pain is relieved, well, that's just fine. Then we've arrived at a correct diagnosis, and I know that the facet joints are problematic for this person. On the other hand, if the patient gets up and moves around, and then they have, uh, they say, well, that took away a little pain, but just not very much at all, then we have to move on to the next portion. And the next, so we go put per the person back down on the operating table, some light sedation, and maybe inject something like the sacroiliac area, the tendons in that area, or one of the other soft tissues. Well, this is a time-consuming kind of a process. Why isn't everybody doing this? Well, for one thing, you're supposed to know what you're going to be doing as a procedure before you get into the operating room. But when I'm searching for pain, I don't know where the pain is going to be coming from. So sometimes it becomes a billing issue for people. The other thing, it takes a fair amount of time. This is time consuming. Be in an operating room, sedate the person, wait till they wake up a little bit, let them move around, discover if their pain is gone or not. If it hasn't, then we go back and we just keep on going. This can take an hour, hour and a half, two hours. It's time consuming. But it's the best way to identify exactly what the problem is. Amazingly enough, I've noticed that you know, when I use cortisone with these, that there's a percentage of people that turn out not to need surgery at all. Their pain is actually completely removed or significantly, uh, uh, significantly improved so that they don't even need a surgical procedure, which is what they came to me in the beginning with. So spinal pain mapping, in my estimation, actually provides us with a diagnosis, which is the most important part of getting the treatment correct. Hey, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this today. Spinal pain mapping is where it's at in terms of determining what procedure, if any, you need for your neck and back pain. Thanks.